Got those logs milled out. Got a bunch of boards milled for the board and batten siding on the greenhouse. Figure I'm gonna need about 75 of these and then 75 of the batten pieces. These pieces are eight inches wide, give or take an eighth of an inch. I figure the batten pieces can probably be about two inches wide. But I'm gonna need to cut down a couple more trees, a couple more of these beetle kill a pine. I think I've got two or three on the north property line. See if I can get the back over there tomorrow, cut them down, bring the bottoms in for milling and the tops in for firewood for next year. Get these going, get it all done. Hopefully we'll have the siding on the greenhouse here in a little while. I did have a little bit of a problem with my, my bandsaw mill, that blade walking and the buildup on top of the, that cutting edge. Talking to people, getting comments on the, the last video I put out on that. I really appreciate all the comments. Gave me some, some thoughts, a little thought process on what I can do to, to help that build up. Had a couple people email me also. Instead of leaving comments, they emailed me. They don't want to get into the politics of the comment section on YouTube. I don't blame them sometimes. Sometimes it can get a little hairy. But uh, a couple people said uh, diesel fuel or kerosene would keep it clean and I I don't doubt it. I'm kind of leery about running a, a flammable fuel through the tank on that. If for some reason I hit a rock and it sparks or anything happens that catches on fire, I, I have no way of putting it out. And you got what, three gallons of usually water in my case in that tank. That catches on fire, that whole sawmill's gone. I can't afford to replace it, so I'm going to stay away from the kerosene and the diesel fuel for now. A um, couple people suggested pine saw, the soap, so I will see next time I get the sawmill going. I'm going to see if I can get some of that. I'll go into town and get some and put it in the, the water bucket, see if that keeps it clean. And also with the, somebody suggested brass brushes on each side of the wheels that the blade goes by and it kind of cleans the blade off. You can mount them up there. So that might be a little further off in the future, getting those brass brushes on there. I'll have to figure out how I can attach them, get it going, but we'll figure something out. I want to, ah, bugs. I want to get it fixed so I don't have to worry about it. I hate worrying about having to watch my blade 100% of the time and make sure it's not dipping down or going kind of wonky on me. I like to just believe in it and push it through. I also did talk to Norwood about it and they suggested that I use pine saw and I push a little faster. I don't usually push the things too fast. I don't usually push it too hard. I uh, kind of just go with it. I don't like to hear it bog down. I don't like to push it too much. But the, ugh, what's with that? What's with the bug that likes my eye? Um, they say that if you, as long as you can hear the motor bog a little bit, that's where you want to have it cutting and that's where it's gonna cut the truest and leave the, the least amount of marks in your boards. So I did notice a couple times I was getting some like diagonal markings on my boards, but looking at them after they dry, you can see on this two by four here, it has a couple of them, but after they dry, those, those marks seem to go away. So we'll see, we'll get some pine saw in there and see if it cuts a little straighter, more true. Keeps that blade clean. Get it going, get it done. Get this greenhouse done. Until next time, guys, go make something.